This is a tetrahedron, and it's the basis for a puzzle that I'd like to show you. You can see it only has four sides, so it's the simplest polyhedron. I guess you can think of it as analogous to how a triangle is the sim simplest polygon because it only has three sides, but in two dimensions. This will kind of give you a clearer picture of its geometry. And this is kind of what we're going to be making in a little bit. I know it looks complicated, but it really isn't bad. If you follow the procedure that I'm going to show you, it's pretty straightforward. Well, this is a prototype for the puzzle that we're going to build, and this one turned out surprisingly well this time. Um, there'll be more on this in a little bit, but let's get to the algebra. I know that's why you really came here. This is a fairly straightforward and reasonably interesting bit of mathematics. This is a an algebraic representation of the pyramidal sequence, or well, I, I don't think it's called the pyramidal sequence. I think it's called the tetrahedral sequence. Let me explain what that is. In the first layer of a stack of cannonballs, you have one cannonball, and then in the second layer, you have three, and then in the third, you have six, and so on. So as with all mathematics, there are patterns that start to emerge. This generates two sets of numbers. The first is a set of how many balls in that layer, and the second is the total number of balls in a pyramid that's however many layers high. This mess here is just a two-dimensional representation of each layer. And this equation provides us with an answer to how many marbles will we need to make a puzzle that has four layers in it. Now, of course, you're thinking that we could just count, and it is fairly straightforward, but this has interesting application to, well, other puzzles, and maybe someday I'll share one of my favorite puzzles with you. But this is a case where the algebra is really simple enough that you shouldn't be avoiding it. I'm not really sure that I'll be able to claim ownership of this puzzle, and likewise I'm sure that there's a multitude of other puzzles that are very similar to this that already exist. But nevertheless, I did experiment with a bunch of different configurations for the marbles, and this is the one that I settled on because it seemed to be the simplest while still really confusing me as I attempted to put it back together. So let me show you how it's put together. The base has a piece of plexiglass embedded in it. And all the cuts are 30 degrees. Here's a piece of the stock. And this is, as I said, a prototype, so I intend to make a larger version out of the golf balls. But let me show you the configuration of the marbles. There are only three different types of pieces. The blue piece and the clear piece are identical. The green piece is just a simple tetrahedron. And the white piece well, it looks like it's going to be difficult to see. Um, it's kind of hard to explain the configuration of the white piece. It's as though there are two triangles kind of leaning on one another construction of the marble version of this puzzle is simple enough. I'm using a piece of plasticine and it's, and it's about a quarter of an inch thick. And it will hold the marbles in place. You can see as we push them down some of the clay squishes up through the center and this creates somewhat of a mold and that'll enable us to pour some epoxy right down through the middle here. Don't bother trying this with hot glue. 
even for a prototype, it will only end in frustration and failure, I promise you. And besides, after a little bit of practice, the epoxy isn't bad looking at all. Now I apologize for the slow pace of this video, but I'm going to run through the four parts because I would think that it's a little bit confusing. This is the simple tetrahedron, and this is pretty much the basis for the entire puzzle. If you look at the blue and the clear pieces, they're the same thing as the common um, tetrahedron, except that there's an additional piece off to the side here. And this may be a good analogy to help you think about how each of the marbles relates to one another. The white one is the real oddball. If you look closely, you can still see that there's a tetrahedron in there. But then on top, on top of that, we have these two pieces that are off to the side a bit. Also, it causes what is probably the source of the confusion when you're trying to do the puzzle, this strange sort of 90 degree arrangement, which you wouldn't even think exists in this puzzle, but it does, and it makes it very confusing to try to assemble it. We'll start with the easiest part first, but before we even get to that, a note of caution. You'll find that when you're drilling a golf ball, most cases, especially most modern golf balls, have this sort of polymer core, and it's consistent the whole way through, and it's very pleasant to drill. But with older golf balls, the construction often had this sort of wound rubber band-like material, and it puts a tremendous amount of stored energy on the core of the ball. And the core of the ball is most often this solid rubber material. And that's not bad, but sometimes it has this hollow rubber core that's filled with a fluid. And because of the incredible amount of pressure that's put on the fluid when you drill it and release the pressure, it can spray liquid directly into your eyes. So my advice is simple. If you start drilling it and you feel rubber bands, just throw it out and get a different golf ball. The connections are simple. It's just quarter inch pecs cut to about five eighths of an inch lengths. As for drilling the first hole, you should really already know this trick, but the object of the game is to drill a hole such that it's pointing directly towards the center of the sphere. So in order to accomplish this, we first drill out a nest for the golf ball to sit into, and then without moving anything, we switch the bit, and the smaller bit will be guaranteed to be pointing directly to the middle of the ball. Okay, that's easy enough so far, but now comes the head scratching part. How do we position it so that the second hole that we drill is spaced correctly. Here's the trick. Relative to our drill bit, we want our first drilled hole to be 60 degrees away. And in order to drill our third hole, we just repeat the same trick. And this forces the drill bit to remain 60 degrees relative to our two previous holes.
The bandsaw is really just for rough cutting these, but this block can better help me to control the sizes of them. Each of the four pieces is made the same way. Now it's just a matter of fitting them together. All right, next in complexity is this piece, and we have two of them. It's worth considering that the bottom four pieces all rest on the same plane. Now in order to get this piece, we have to first make the common tetrahedron piece. So you'll have to make one of these for every single piece, but then there is additional work to do. Now this piece is easy enough because it just has the first two holes drilled. But these pieces that are marked with the red and the blue are what we have to consider now. We'll look at the blue first. Now the red and the blue are really just mirror images of one another. And you can see our three normal triangle holes. But this special hole is in line with these two. So here we can see how the pieces are symmetrical because I've left the connection pegs in the three common 60 degree holes. And the two without the pegs in them are the two special ones. Now by all means pause this at any time to stop and consider this because I would think that I would be confused if I was the one watching. Now right now I have the special one marked in black and that would be this connection here. And if we look closely and bend our brain a little bit, we'll notice that this ball relative to this one is actually 90 degrees. So these connections are perpendicular to one another. And this should help you visualize it. Now, even though I might have complicated this to an absurd degree, wait until you see how simple the procedure is. I'm going to mark the special one with a pencil. Take notice that all three of these holes are in an alignment, and the hole that we want to drill is still being kept at 60 degrees from the nearest hole, but it's 90 degrees from the second closest hole. It is honestly that simple. And if we want to do the blue piece, we just rotate this piece around. Because as I said before, the red and the blue pieces are simply mirror images of one another. And finally, we come to the piece with the highest level of complexity. I'm not going to go much further into the details of constructing this part because I think you have enough information now to construct it yourself. But I would like you to look at it this way, which should help you. Keep in mind the tetrahedral portion of this part. Understanding it this way will help you build this, and all you have to do is apply the techniques that I've shown you. I think that I'll end this video here because it's getting kind of long, but I still would like to make some improvements to this puzzle by adding color to the balls and also by making the base that I had talked about. So depending on how well received this video is, I still may make a second part to it. 
I hope that you found this video interesting, and I also hope that it inspired you to want to make this. See you later. Sometimes it just makes you feel stupid. Okay, well, I'm certainly not man enough to do it with my bare hands, so I think that passes the test, but I still win.